It's time now for the best high school sports action from the WBCB Sports Network. Catch the best games from Bucks and Mercer County at WBCBSports.com and our Facebook page. Your home for high school sports is right here at WBCB 1490. Welcome to Trenton. It is six seed South Brunswick 20 and six, taking on one seed Trenton Central. The Tornadoes 28 and one. The last game they set the record for wins in this program's history, and they'll look to add to that. Central Jersey Group Four Sectional Final coming your way from Trenton here on WBCB. Thanks to the sponsors making this live stream possible. Capital Health System, Alderman Ford Subaru, the Revere Restaurant, New Jersey Education Association, the Mercer County Prosecutor's Office, Team Toyota, Capital Area YMCA, the Trentonian Hyundai of Trenton, the Italian People's Bakery, Henry J. Austin Health Center, as well as Mako in Ewing. Great to be with you for another championship game. We had one last night. Congrats to the Nottingham North Stars. Keith Noonan alongside Mercer County Hall of Famer Rich Fisher with you from Trenton. And Fish, the saying around here is you want the high, you got the high. Most teams have not wanted the high this year, but South Brunswick has them tonight. No team has won here <laughs> except Trenton this year. But hey, this South Brunswick team isn't afraid of anything. They're coming in as a sixth seed that's played more like a top seed. It blew through their first three games, and, and they played in a lower bracket. It featured a lot of upsets. The Vikings beat 11th seeded Old Bridge and third seeded and their arch rival, North Brunswick, both by 26 points. Then they defeated Marlboro, who we know is always very tough in these state games. Yep. They beat Marlboro by 11, and Marlboro gotten by by upseeding second seeded Free Old Township. So this bracket, this Central Ford bracket, Neither the second, third, or fourth seeds even got to the semifinals of this tournament. That's how balanced this tournament is. But the one seed has survived easily as Trenton has defeated 16-seeded Sayreville, eight-seeded West Windsor Plainsboro South, and fifth-seeded Middletown South by a combined 100 points. Now, here's something for you, Flash. Is it a good omen that this is the third straight team the Tornadoes will play with the word South? as part of the school's name. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Probably not. But it, I just wanted to point it out that there's another South in the house. Um, that is true. South Brunswick got off to a slow start this year, 4-4. Four and four, But now, right now, they're hot. They've won four. Coming into this, they've won four, three straight, 11 of their last 12, and 16 out of the last 18. Its lone loss in their last 12 games was by three points, to a powerful St. Thomas Aquinas team in the Greater Middlesex Conference Tournament semifinals. And, uh, you know, if common foes mean anything, Trenton had the advantage because they beat they beat St. Thomas Aquinas pretty easily. Um, South Brunswick is a really tough team to bring down, though. In, in, the other, in its other four losses, Flash, one was by two points, one was by four, and three, two were by three. So you're looking at a team that very well could be 25-1 and one with a few different bounces. Uh, it's also a program that knows how to win. Vikes won Central Jersey Group 4 in 2020, but didn't have a chance to go for a state crown because of the COVID year. Last year, they got to the semifinals of Central Jersey before losing, and they got a whirlwind guard, Kalani Antoine, a 5'7 whirlwind, averages 19.5 per game, hit 51 threes, and he's got a, a back guard mate who's like 6'7", I think. 6'6", uh, six, six, he's six, listed as. 6'6", guard, yeah. Hamar, how do you say it? Chabra? Hamihar Chabra. Hamihar Chabra, who really makes his team go. He averages 13 points, 4.5 assists, 8.5 rebounds a game. However, in practice yesterday, he broke his nose. Mm. And he will be playing. He's playing with a mask on. So he's playing. But you never know how that's going to affect a guy, you know? You don't know if uh, the mask will affect him. You don't know if it will make him hesitant or sure, not. Got to, got, to get, got to get used to it. Yeah, and, you know, it's like anything. You have to get moved, you know. I wear a CPAP mask to bed. You got to get, it took me weeks to get yeah. used to that. Yep. You wear a COVID mask. It takes you a long time. <laughs> he's wearing a mask and knocking bodies. So, uh, you know, I hope he's playing at full, full, full force because, you know, that you want to see everybody ready to go. Yep. Uh, 
well, more than likely, Antoine will be the tornado's focus. Uh, in the last two games, they've really shut out the opponent's top scorers very effectively. And once again, it's going to be the defense of Antoine Bridget and Calvin Moore that will be big for the Tornadoes. And, look, they're riding the crest of confidence that can go a long way. They're 28-1, school record for wins in the season, Mercer County champs, getting contributions from every starter in a big way. And Devontae Hudson has really stepped up in this state tournament uh, scoring-wise, and he continues to pound the boards. And Chris Wilson, Bridget Moore, and Cab Goss, they're all wreaking havoc at both ends of the floor. Uh, Trenton is no stranger to this game. They're making their fourth appearance, fourth finals appearance in the last five years, but they're going for their first sectional title since 18. They lost to Marlboro in last year's title game, dropped a one-point heartbreaker to Freehold Township in 2019, and beat Marlboro in 18. Um, you know, I, I think this is going to be their biggest test yet. This South Brunswick team is certainly no slouch. And I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, we'll be hard-pressed to meet the excitement of last night's game where Nottingham built an 18-point lead. Ewing got it to four, and it was a dogfight. But uh, this game could turn into that as well, although we've seen Trenton kind of rise to the occasion when they played a really good team too. So we'll see. Uh, whoever survives tonight will travel to Central High School on Thursday for the Group 4 State Semifinal and they'll play the winner of tonight's Egg Harbor Lenape South Jersey Group 4 final game. So we're looking forward to it. We're not going to have uh, coaches interviews because neither coach came out. On th both coaches were in the locker room for a really long time and as soon as Pup came out, he's over talking to uh, the South Brunswick coach. So we only got four minutes left to go till game time. So no coaches, folks. You'll have to imagine what they're going to say, what no, they were going to say. Right, no coaches. And as the stakes get higher, uh, coaches have denied interviews. They've gotten superstitious, obviously, <laughs> uh, as she Shelly Dearden and Chris Raba both uh, had the assistant coaches uh, on. And a programming note, we will be – doing the Nottingham-Morristown game tomorrow from Brick Memorial, uh, but it will be an audio-only broadcast. So Fish and I will be there um, giving you the action, but it will be audio-only. We did not get the rights um, to broadcast it via live stream. So it will be same thing, WBCB Sports, and you can go under the high school game tab, and that game will be up on the website. So just keep an eye on that tomorrow for those of you who might be interested. But... This uh, this Trenton team just continues, like you said, to rise to the occasion. And they're going to have what you said, probably their tallest task yet with a couple of guys, one in Kalani Antoine averaging almost 20 points. And then you've got the big guy down low in Chabra. Yeah, and Chabra, is, uh, you know, I think it all keys off of him. He's down low, but he leads them in assists. Uh, and I was he lead he he can shoot a three pointer. I was watching him shoot threes. He's just burying yep. them yep. like they're they're not even moving the strings. <laughs> so, I mean, this kid can do it inside and outside. So Trenton's going to have to. The last couple games, they've had one real scorer that they've had to shut down, and they've done that. This game, they got two to worry about. And I'm, you know, I'm sure South Brunswick's other guys are pretty good too. You know. You don't win 20 games without getting contributions from everybody. So, uh, you know, is it as simple as trying to shut those two guys down? I don't know. I mean, uh, this South Brunswick team has really developed a winning attitude over the past 10, 15 years. They had Dave Turco there for a while, the brother of former Notre Dame coach Bobby Turco. And he left, and Joe Homan took over. And they just – they really have become a solid, consistent winning program, and uh, you know this is this is this will be uh, this will be Trenton's second game against a middle a greater Middlesex conference team. Say they open with Sayreville, but this is going to be a little tougher than the Sayreville game. I can guarantee you that. Yeah, Sayreville, very young, had a bunch of sophomores cracking the starting lineup. This one, like Fish said, a bit different. And you know what's really impressed me a lot as well with this Trenton team is that all the pressure has been on them from the start of the season. 
and they've only slipped up once and lost one game. Right. And they continue to do that with all of the expectations from last year into this year, losing in this game last year, now having the home court advantage, all the rest, and they still have almost ran through most of their opponents. Yeah, and, and you talk about these expectations, but you know what? These are the expectations they've put on themselves. They uh, they expected to be here. They, 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 they're they going to accept nothing less than winning a state title. I mean, sure, they want to win Central Jersey for the first time in five years, but if they win tonight, I don't think you're going to see the – I mean, we saw a really jubilant Nottingham team yes. yesterday. Yep. We saw a Nottingham team that knew it did something special. Rightfully so. Yeah, and, yep. and they were they were fired up and jumping. I We'll see a happy Trenton team today, and I, I don't know. Maybe they will be jumping up and down. But I have a feeling that their focus is, you know, not well, their focus obviously is on South Brunswick tonight, but <laughs> their long-term goal is to be playing in that championship game at Rutgers in a couple of days at the end of the week. So uh, we'll see what happens. And here's Shavar shooting foul shots right now. Oh, he missed that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a packed house. I was uh. in the parking lot at about quarter of five, and it was it was a, it was jamming up then. And I'm sure people are still driving around now looking for places to park. What a night it was last night, Ewing Nottingham, and what a night this is going to be. And what a contest as the Tornadoes get set to tip it off here from Trenton. What an atmosphere last night. What an atmosphere here at Trenton. The fans already getting loud. Yep. Yeah, they're ready. I mean, they're ready, isn't it? They, they've been waiting for a while, and they, they love this team. They've embraced this team because you know what? This team is special in the fact that they've had a chance to get to know these players because they've all played for three or four years. They've gotten a familiarity with these guys. They've watched them grow. They've watched them succeed. They've watched them have, you know, disappointments. And they're with these guys all the way. This is kind of like a, a little family thing here with the uh, with the closest of the fans and, and the team. And uh, right now we're going to shut up for the national <laughs> anthem and uh, let America speak for couple minutes we will take a break and come back with a tip from trenton central jersey group four sectional final on the line champion will be crowned tonight right after this the gator jerry blavitt inviting you to come on by and experience true traditional italian cuisine at the revere restaurant at 802 river road in ewing township you're always welcome at the restaurant i mean it's like stepping back in time you feel like you're dining in south philadelphia or in new york's little italy restaurant you can start the meal with complimentary hoboken bread you choose from a menu featuring fresh seafood steaks and chops or homemade pasta dishes you can even eat at the bar the restaurant is open seven days for lunch and dinner. Private rooms are available for special affairs, plus we do catering. Remember, the Revere Restaurant, 609-882-6365. Again, that's 609-882-6365. Come on home and experience the true taste of Italy at the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road, Ewing Township. Your vehicle is in good hands at Haldeman Collision, Route 33 in Hamilton Township. They do it all at Haldeman Collision. Minor dents and dings, bumpers, windshields, major body, and frame damage. Free estimates, 24-hour towing, most insurance accepted, and loaners available. Haldeman Collision works with all makes and models. They'll go out of their way to getting your car back in brand new condition. Haldeman Collision, conveniently located 20 minutes from Langhorne, Princeton, Ewing, on Route 33 in Hamilton Township. Hi, Merrill Reese for Capital Health, reminding you that the former St. Francis Medical Center is now Capital Health East, and they still offer a 24-7 emergency department as well as outpatient medical clinic services. To enter the emergency department and outpatient clinic, please use the Burt Avenue entrance. Capital Health. Proud to be a partner for better health in our state's capital, Trenton, New Jersey. 1490 WBCB Levittown and Trenton and video stream live at WBCBSports.com. Your home for the best local sports in Bucks and Mercer Counties.
Welcome back to Trenton. Starting lineups about to be introduced in a moment by Darren Freedom Green. And this place is absolutely packed. Yeah, going to be loud. South Brunswick will go first. Bruce Muniz out there first. The guard, Kalani Antoine, averaging 19 a game. Ashavir Singh, the third out there. And then Harmi Har Chabra. And Dan Swirad is the last starter for South Brunswick. So Muniz, Antoine Singh, Jabra, and Swirad, the starters for South Brunswick. The Vikings, I believe. You are correct, my yeah. friend. I covered South Brunswick sports for about 13, 14 years when wow. I did a uh, work for a weekly paper up there. But I still dabbled in Mercer as well. Of course. <laughs> Trenton Central, Cape Goss out there first. What an addition for this Trenton team this season. Calvin Deuce Moore. Tenacious defender and has really gotten in on the scoring as well. Chris Wilson, who's really been their leading scorer for majority of the season. The big man down low. And of course, the thousand point scorer, Devontae Hudson. And then we'll have the general, the other thousand point scorer on this team, Antoine Bridget. Bridget was a guy that, as Fish alluded to, the Trenton fans really got to know because he was a starter when he was a freshman. Well, I think Hudson uh, played he, a lot He then did too. play a lot, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, they, they, you know, these fans, they, they watch these guys. And it's kind of cool to see freshmen, you know, really start to, like, are the cheerleaders going to move back here? <laughs> I think they have to, don't they? I would think they're on the floor right now, so <laughs> yeah. that might be troublesome. Yeah. For more than just us. <laughs> well, you'd be a little concerned, right? Well, I think the players might Correct. kind of run into it. Exactly. Central Jersey Group 4 sectional final from Trenton. And it'd be interesting to see what Daryl Young does with his bench today. He really didn't play a lot of subs yesterday, or two days ago, against uh, Middletown South. He, right. uh, he went mostly with an iron five. They, wasn't completely. I mean, he did dribble a few subs in here and there. But, you know, you're, when you're at this point, <laughs> you go with your strength. Well, and I was talking to a couple of assistant coaches, and South Brunswick really doesn't run too deep either. They play maybe seven guys in total. Well, that's about what they'll play, too. Right. Chabra and Chris Wilson. Ready to tip it off. It's unbelievable Gerard breaks his, breaks his nose in practice. Yeah. Chabrud tips it up, and Antoine tips it to Calvin Moore, and we're underway. Sectional final on the line. Directing traffic. Monte Hudson over to Cape Goss. Devontae looking for some space. Now Wilson, Bridget stops, pops, a three, way off. Rebound picked up by Swirad. Good dish down low, first blood drawn by Swirad with a bucket. And it's two to nothing, South Brunswick. Inside, nice scoop layup, but it's missed by Goss. Swirad again with a board. Chabra fires across. Antoine. Over to Singh. Singh in trouble. Chabra 
will give it up. Muniz being guarded by Goss. Chabra fires into the paint. Nice move, Antoine, and he got fouled. Yeah, real nice. And a good play that time. Chabra with a good pass. And a chance for two at the line. First one up and good. Hey, Billy. Six forty four, first quarter. Both good from the line. Calvin Moore. Goes baseline, scores, and one! Deuce Moore, chance at a three-point play. Well, there you go. We said Deuce has really, Deuce has really come on strong in this state tournament. He's become a big scorer, not a big scorer, but a double-figure scorer. And uh, that's all he need. Add another guy scoring to this already potent attack. Missed the free throw, but the rebound picked up by Wilson. As usual. Yep. Passes back up top. Goss looks for some space, kicks it out. Moore for three. Long. Rebound, Swyrad again. Swyrad is the rebounding machine. Yeah, he's got three so All far. Three. <laughs> Singh. Over to Muniz. Muniz trying to get around Goss. That's a tall task. Yep. Jabra. He'll pick your pocket. Puts Clean. it on the floor. He's in trouble. Gives it up. Trenton fans like it. <laughs> Jabra in the lane. Antoine fires off the mark. Fight for the rebound. Swyrat almost had another one. Chris Wilson picks it up, though. Well, Moore picked it up. Moore got the cheap rebound. <laughs> <laughs> Wilson right. kind of knocked it over to him. Moore just scooped it up. Long jump shot, and Devante can't connect. Chabra with his first rebound. Muniz on the drive, spins in, kicks out, sing. Little too strong, off iron. Hudson picks up the board that time. Hudson went high for that rebound. Stolen away, Bridget got it taken by Muniz. You see how high up Hudson was when he got that yes. rebound? Yes. <laughs> he can jump with the best of them. That's what they said about you until you busted well, out your knee, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Kid that played golf his entire life. Chabra floats it up, missed it. Swyrat again, and he can't connect either. South Brunswick missing a couple of easy shots. Blocked away, Calvin Moore got swatted. Moving quickly, South Brunswick, the Vikings. Singh, good pass, Muniz, reverse layup. Drops Very it nice. in. Very nice shot. Six to two, bit of a slow start for the Tornadoes. Yeah. South Brunswick not really lighting it up, but. Doing a nice job defensively. Yeah, they are. Bridget trying to get around Swyrad. Lob pass down low. Hudson missed the shot. Oh. Tipped around. Wilson right there to put it in. I don't know what happened there. I mean, Sabra had it. it. He had nobody to even challenge him. And it just dropped it. He just pushed the ball away. And Wilson got it for the a fortuitous two points. Muniz, lots of hand fighting. Chabra. Sizing it up, cross-court pass. Antoine, no good. That was another triple attempt for him. Yeah, he's starting slow. Goss thought about a three, step back, but he won't take it. Wilson inside, floating it up, and got it to fall. 
It's a tie game at six. Early in the game, 3-10. Opening quarter. Freedom is in strong voice tonight. Oh, he's fantastic. As the games have gotten bigger, so is he on the mic. Antoine, nice layup. He floated it over Wilson. Calvin Moore left open from downtown. And he's not going to take it. Calvin will try to set it up. Bridget looking for an opening. Cross court pass. This time Moore takes it. Oh. And it's a bit too strong off iron. Rebound Antoine going the other way. Jabra over to Singh. Singh moves inside. He scores. Really nice shot. Yeah, they have pretty good touch around the basket, some of these guys. 10-6. Ooh. And Muniz almost jumped the pass. Goss instead puts it up. Oh, it's an air ball, and he fell down in the process. I don't see that too much. No, you don't. He's one of the better three-point shooters in this area. Yeah. Well, like any streak shooter, though, he can have his, his rough spots. Like any shooter, I should say. Any, any shooter is a streak shooter, really. Swyrad looking to get it in, and he does. Muniz will bring it up, being guarded by Goss. And Trenton has not had the full court pressure on. No. Just a man-to-man. -man. Chabra on the block. Spins, falling away, got tipped by Devontae Hudson. Fight for it, and it's out on Trenton. Swyrod was in there fighting like a maniac again. <laughs> that kid's something else. He's fun to watch, yeah. trying to get a rebound at least. Yeah. Muniz comes out. They have him listed as Daniel Swyra. He, he plays more like a Danny to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where all these people are coming from. But <laughs> they must be squeezing them in. John Rappaccio comes in for the first time. Number 21, Fish. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Stolen away by Chris Wilson. 135, opening quarter. Goss moves in, got it taken away. Whoop. Rappuccio ends up on the ground. <laughs> and they say it's off. Uh, Rappuccio going the other way. 21. 21. <laughs> a little bit, you can see a little bit of anxiousness, a little bit of uh, kind of... I don't want to say nervousness. They don't look nervous, but everybody's trying so hard to do the right thing. A little over, over anxious, I think. Bridget kicks it out. Wilson for three. Bang! <laughs> look at Wilson. Don't let him get going from outside. No. That's huge trouble if that's the case. Chabra out on the wing. Into the paint. Floats it up. And he gets it to fall. Nice shot. He looks so natural taking that shot, doesn't he? I don't think that mask is affecting him a whole lot right now. No, it doesn't look it. Goss stops and gives it to Devontae. And Trenton likes to hold in these situations. They're down early in the game, 12-9. to 9. How often have you said that in a game this year? <laughs> Bridget. Floater. Good. Beautiful touch. Nice job. Bridget was in there with some big guys. When you loft it over a floater like that from the hip, they're not going to get it. Antoine guarding Antoine. 12-11. Five seconds. Antoine dribbling around. It tough. One second. Throws it up. And that ends the quarter. And the fans... Loved what they just saw out of Antoine Bridget. Yep. Taking on the leading scorer. They appreciate it. 12-11, Trenton down by one. Off to the second quarter after this on WBCB. New Jersey is home to the best public schools in the nation. And that didn't happen by accident. It's the result of parents, educators, and communities working together year after year to give our students a world-class education, no matter the challenge because parents and educators know that with a shared commitment to our public schools, 
our children can learn, grow, and thrive. And together, we can keep New Jersey's public schools the best in the nation. This is Merrill Reese reminding you that Haldeman Ford Subaru on Route 33 in Hamilton Township is more than just a great place to purchase a new Ford Subaru or pre-owned car or truck. Their collision and service centers services all makes and models and specializes in fleet service. Haldeman's Collision Center is renowned for their work. It's a state-of-the-art facility. All insurance accepted, free estimates and loaner cars available, and one of the friendliest staffs around. From small dents to major repairs on any maker model, Model. It's Haldeman Ford Subaru Collision Center, Route 33 in Hamilton Township. They're good. Welcome back to Trenton. Keith Noonan, Rich Fisher with you. Central Jersey Group 4 sectional final here on WBCB. 12-11. The Vikings look awfully good in that first quarter, Fish. Yeah, they did. They look good. They, uh, you, you know, they... they they, they look good, but they didn't convert on a lot of the shots that I think they should have converted on. But yeah, I mean, they looked about what I expected. They, they, they're not gonna, they're not gonna wither here in this in this atmosphere. Antoine got fouled on the floor, and we'll see who that's on. <laughs> Antoine is not, he's not tall and he's not muscular. He's he's a slight kid. Kalani Antoine listed at 5'7", 140. Inside, Chabra blocked <laughs> away by Devontae Hudson. Up ahead, Trenton in transition, and that's the result. Antoine Bridget, chance on an N1. There you go. Defensive transition, block a shot, break out, run out, get out, and go. Just like that, Trenton has the lead. Yep. And the, and the foul's on Antoine. Trenton would like to see him get, get a few more. Bridget converts the three-point play. So Hudson had that uh, rebound, or that block. Right? Yes. Right. Chris, I do have the iPad here for your reference if you need it for the replay. Uh, oh, that's right. It's about 20 seconds delayed. Rappuccino with a bucket. Calvin Moore, long jump shot. No good. Hudson keeps it alive. Moore lost the handle. Ends up with Bridget. Good pass down low. Wilson converts a hook shot. He is just playing great right now. Back and forth we go. 16-14, Cape Goss a steal. He's ahead of the field. He converts the layup. And the high fans were up and running. When he was off and running, the high fans were up and ready to go. Fans on their feet, a lot of them. This team is driven by defense, and you just saw why. Defense and opportunistic offense on fast breaks. And they got in a couple now. Falling away. What a shot by Jabra. Banked it off. Nice, nicely job of using the backboard there. Goes Wilson for three. Wilson again. No good. Jabra, long pass to Antoine. And Antoine missed the layup. It was contested by Calvin Moore. He's running out in the break. Moore steps in. Look at that move. Deuce Moore with a deuce. A pretty deuce at that. Chris Wilson, rejection! Who had that rejection? Wilson, again. On who? And a timeout taken. I had a ton of people standing in front of me there. Great Grant, Great Grant standing up, encouraging the fans to stand up. The most recognizable player in this program's history rallying the fans from across the gym. All right, who had that, who had that shot? That was Antoine put it up and right. got swatted away by Wilson. Thanks. If you miss any of today's action, read about it in the Tritonian or Tritonian.com. Only newspaper serving Bucks, Burlington, and Mercer County seven days a week. It is the Trentonian car inventory in Mercer and Bucks counties. All new Hyundai of Trenton. All new Hyundai models, pre-owned cars, SUVs, all types of models. 
They've got the inventory ready for delivery, 1655 North Olden Avenue in Ewing Township. Check out the Italian People's Bakery on 63 Butler Street for the rolls, deli meats, the pastries. Have the best hoagies, finest dessert trays for any get-together, the Italian People's Bakery since 1936. I'll tell you, that's a good timeout by Joe Holman because Trenton's starting to really feel it now. They're getting out on the break. They're, you know, a couple of block shots here between Hudson and Wilson. And, uh, you know, he, he just, I'm sure he just got him settled down, said, all right, look, fellas, settle down. And this crowd really started to get going. Yeah. And you have to worry about things like that. It just... Oh, yeah. When a crowd is so deafening like that, that's what you have to do, right? you got to try to settle some things down. Yeah, when you're in this kind of atmosphere. Yes. Singh gets it in. Antoine oh. fell down. No whistle. Oh, there is a whistle. And three shots upcoming, and they have to whistle it again. Yeah, well, I, I think he took it. Yeah, I, I think that's a good call. Yep. It's way too much contact I mean, there. It happened right in front of us. I yep. mean, couldn't have a better view of it. So three shots. Foul was on Goss. No. It was on Antoine. That's two on him. Yep. Alani Antoine averaging 19 a game. Yeah, maybe there was a whistle, but nobody heard it because Oh, there was. It was just you, nobody could hear it. Yeah, Antoine <laughs> got up and he's like, "What?" Like, is, there was like a look of disbelief on his face. <laughs> well, like, you you could even tell because some of the players continued to play on the other side of the floor, even though the right, whistle was right. sounded on this side of the floor. Right. That's why the other official came into the paint and started blowing the whistle again. Twenty to nineteen, really nicely done by Kalani Antoine. Well, he drained those like could no shoot problem all day. Calvin Moore looking over the defense. Looks like a little zone. Yeah. Demir Bailey in the game. You'll get no slack off when Demir Bailey comes in. Calvin Moore for three. No good. Swyrad with another rebound. His fifth. Wow. Jabra gives it up. Calvin Moore will guard Singh. Muniz over to Antoine. Back over to Swyrad who tried to feed it down low. And it's a turnover. Really good defense by Trenton. Jabra wanted a foul, but he won't get one. And Antoine Bridget will come out with two fouls. Chris Wilson back in. Approaching five minutes left, second quarter. Trenton with a one point lead. Goss on the drive, floating shot, won't go. But he ends up with a rebound in the corner for three. No good. Another offensive chance. Demir Bailey keeps it alive. This could be huge for Trenton. Yeah. Third chance, more miss, <laughs> but a fourth chance. Chris Wilson puts it in. Jeez, oh man. 22-19, these are the types of things you cannot do when you're playing a 28-win team. Right. Give them four chances to score. Pass deflected, goes into the corner out of play on Trenton. Chris Wilson with 11 points and five rebounds and a block <laughs> shot so far. <laughs> Not a bad season. In one quarter, <laughs> one half. Not a bad game. <laughs> and batting baseline. Singh's got to get it in, and he does. Chabra, cross-court pass. Singh left open for three. And he's too strong. Chris Wilson, his sixth rebound. Long pass. Wilson stops. Feeds. Bailey falling away. Way long. Muniz. Had it come right into his lap. Four minutes to go. Second quarter. Trenton with a slim lead. Good defense by Calvin Moore. All over Moniz and a double dribble. Yeah. We said it all year. 
they're, they're, they're not just about full court press. They're about really solid, intense half court defense. Yeah, and they have not really pressed. They have had a pretty nice half court defense, but they have not Thank had you. to put the full court pressure on. Wilson will back it out. Trenton off a turnover. Goss launches. Oh, that looked Can't good. <laughs> Long pass. Swirad poked away, and it will stay here. Great job of getting back by Trenton there. They tried to get out fast. Trenton would have none of it. Sing to inbound. Can't get it in, Ooh. and he barely does. That was Swirad. Close. Antoine from the corner missed. Calvin Moore pulls down the rebound. And a foul. Goss got tied up with Kalani Antoine. Antoine having trouble getting going. One for seven from yeah. the field. He's got seven points, but five of them are from the foul line. Calvin Moore across Wilson. He stays hot. Another triple. He can't be stopped right now. 25 to 19. Trenton. This is where South Brunswick has to be careful. Yep. Can't let this turn into a blowout. Jabra picks up his dribble. Muniz over to Singh. Singh looking around. Good defense by the Tornadoes. What else is new? Chabra moves in. In the oh. lane, it's stripped. Demir Bailey. Nice play. Good handsy play. Yeah. They're everywhere. It's like they're everywhere. Everything these guys try to do, somebody from Trenton is there. And I, I can see a little bit of frustration in the Vikings' faces right now. Well, it's been several times that Chabra has put it on the floor and tried to get into the lane. And a couple of times, he's got it knocked away from him like that. Right. Trenton is definitely keying in on him, as you have to, in the paint. Antoine falling away. No good. Oh, yeah. And who else but Swyrad <laughs> getting the rebound? Antoine kind of forcing that shot. Yeah. Uh, sometimes when you get a little frustrated, you try to make things happen. And these are kind of big foul shots early in the game for South Brunswick. They have looked awfully good from the line, though. Yeah, they sure have. Well, only Antoine's taken them so far. His first non-Antoine free throws. One for two. 212. <laughs> Trenton will bring it up. Bridget back in the game. Crossover. He's left wide, wide open for open. three, and there's a whistle. A whistle before the shot. Oh. An offensive foul. No wonder he was so open. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl Pup Young looking on, and he's got his hands extended by his side. Now he's making a motion. <laughs> So the foul negates the triple, and it's 25 to 20 still. Under two minutes to play, second quarter. Whoa. Antoine, open, cans the three. I don't care how cold he is, you can't leave that guy that wide open. Nope. Yeah, he just he just buried that. Two-point lead for the Tornadoes. Yeah, South Brunswick's doing a nice job of hanging in. They have played a really solid half, but they've got to finish it. Goss off a screen, moves in, kicks nice. out. Bailey for three. Little long, tipped around. Hudson falling away, short. Chabra pulls down the rebound. Singh kicks into the corner. Floater, Antoine, short. And Chris Wilson picks up another rebound. Trenton moving fast. He's going to have a double-double before the half is over. Demir Bailey steps in and missed the shot off the glass. 
That's why we're at another rebound. <laughs> he might as well just have a little tape recorder that says that. <laughs> Wide open. Oh, go. No. Three, knocked down, no whistle. Swyrad ties the game. He is cleaning up on the board. Stretton has got to do better on him. Absolutely. We have a tie game, second quarter. If anyone thought this wasn't going to be a tough game for Trenton. Well, we said when Trenton got that lead, oh, there's a nice move. Good fake. Pumps, Antoine scores. Two point lead for Trenton. That was just outright pretty. <laughs> Nothing else you could say about it. Chabra in the front court, got it stolen. Hudson puts it in. 7 seconds left in the quarter. What a what a killer that is. Chabra gives it up. Sing 1 second step back. No good. What a way to end it for Trenton. <laughs> South Brunswick gets on a little run there. Gets six in a row and then the, uh, the Tornadoes respond with four points and an electrifying last basket there with the steal and the slam dunk. I mean, that's that's just, uh, what a way to put an exclamation part point on the half. Trenton leads 29-25 and we'll be back right after this on WBCB. This is Angela Weiner for your Mercer County Prosecutor, and I'd like to take this opportunity to wish all of our Mercer County student athletes the best of luck, and also urge parents to stay involved in your children's school activities. Extracurricular events are a great way to keep your sons and daughters focused, and it does not have to be athletics. They can be involved with the drama club, the school band, even the debate team. An involved student today has a brighter future tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the Mercer County Prosecutor's Office, and I hope you enjoy today's game. Hi, Merrill Reese reminds you to come back home to traditional Italian cuisine at the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road in Ewing Township. You'll always feel welcome at the Revere. It's like Stepping back in time where you'll feel like you're dining in South Philly or New York's Little Italy. Start your meal with complimentary Hoboken bread. Choose from a menu featuring fresh seafood dishes, succulent steaks and chops, or homemade pasta dishes. You can even eat at the bar. The Revere is open seven days for lunch and dinner. Private room available for special affairs, plus catering. For reservations, call 609-882-6365 at 609 609- 882-6365. Come home to traditional Italian cuisine. The Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road, Ewing Township. There really is nothing like a home team advantage. That's why Team Toyota makes a great choice for your next vehicle purchase or service. With our MVP pricing guarantee, teammate rewards program, and streamlined customer experience, our award-winning operation ensures that you can trust our process. A home team advantage is nothing without the community. Our employees are part of our family, part of your town, and we're all part of the team. We're always here for you at one of our three locations in Princeton, Langhorne, and Glen Mills, or at teamtoyota.net. Hi, Merrill Reese for Capital Health, reminding you that the former St. Francis Medical Center is now Capital Health East, and they still offer a 24-7 emergency department as well as outpatient medical clinic services. To enter the emergency department and outpatient clinic, please use the Burt Avenue entrance. Capital Health, proud to be a partner for better health in our state's capital, Trenton, New Jersey. 1490 WBCB Levittown and Trenton and video stream live at WBCBSports.com. Your home for the best local sports in Bucks and Mercer Counties. Okay, welcome back to Trenton High School with a score 29-25 in favor of your Tornadoes. I'm Bill Redner along with Mayor Reed Gusiora and Trenton High's number one fan, former Mayor Doug Palmer, who graduated or went to Trenton High School, played Trenton sports. Doug, let's start off with you. Trenton's in a close game here and you gotta give South Brunswick credit. 
Yeah, well, you know, when you get to this level in the championship of uh, Central Jersey Group Group 4, you know this team is ready. They're battle-tested. They've won two or three games, and they're used to playing in a, in a, in a big crowd like this. Uh, you know, Trenton came out uh, playing good defense, but South Brunswick's been a little tough. I, I look forward, though, to the second half with Trenton getting better shooting percentages and, and uh, getting better shots. But they're playing hard, and, and that's what I like to see. But South Brunswick is tough. They came to play. They certainly did. And Mayor Gusiora, uh, they remind me a little bit South Brunswick of Princeton. A little backdoor plays, and they have outstanding uh, field goal percentage so far. Yeah, it's a, it's a good high school, good-sized high school, so we're evenly matched. But I think that uh, our our offense and defense are right on 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 game, and uh, we're ready to pull this one out. I think the the great thing is the spirit of the schools. How many students came out really to support uh, the teams out, and uh, I think this is a great day for Trenton and great tri day for Trenton High School. And of course, uh, Doug. Also, not only the students but the adult community. I mean, is out here in full force for Trenton. They always are. Matter of fact, they're the ones who are here throughout the regular season. It's mostly the adults, and that says a lot about Trenton pride. You know, it does. And not to mention, you have three, three mayors, Trenton mayors here, along with myself and Mayor Gustiori. You have Mayor Eric Jackson is here as well. And you know, the fans are very supportive. The cheerleaders have it going on. It's just a great atmosphere. And like I said, it's the, the second half is going to be very competitive. I expect a give and take game. But at the end, I think Trenton's uh, athleticism and their press and, and their outside shooting are going to are going to win the day. I'll tell you one thing. What has impressed me is South Brunswick is not afraid of this crowd. Uh, they are, you know, used to playing, I guess, in front of these types of crowds. And they look like a seasoned team. Oh, they are, and uh, they they definitely have a height. Um, but we got the power. Antoine Bridget is doing a fantastic job. Um, our seniors are really just pay, paying the heart out. And Doug, if you were Trenton High's coach, what would you be telling those kids at halftime right now? I would tell them to be. First of all, I'd tell them to keep playing the defense they're doing, doing, but also to take good shots and don't rush. I think if they take good shots. Uh, their shooting percentage will come up and also look for the open man because I don't believe that they can really guard them. I know they're playing a zone, but they, the, the Trenton offense can really break that. They just have to take their time, not speed up, and get good shots, and, and, and they'll fall. And as that falls, this crowd is going to really pick Erupt. it up. <laughs> and and we're, we're, we're going to, like, blow them out then. <laughs> Mayor Gusiora, you've got to be proud of the city, how they have come out throughout this entire tournament run. It's the pride of Trenton, and it says something about Trentonians. Absolutely, and you look at the investment that the state gave us, this $150 million uh, project, the, the high school, it's uh, second to none in the state, and uh, we're just proud of the facility, but we are going to take the roof off. <laughs> yeah, um. what I'd like to say, Bill, you know, not only is the mayor here, but you have the new council that got elected. I see, I saw uh, council all seven president, all seven are here. I saw council president Frisbee here, and Joe Harrison at East Ward, and I saw Jenna uh, from the South Ward, and, and of course, Yaz. Jossie is here. Yaz and Jossie. So that really says there's a new spirit in Trenton. Mayor, Mayor Gustavo got reelected with a wide margin, and it's emblematic. Trends a city that's on the rise, and this team is on the rise. Well, this team reflects the city of Trenton, and of course, uh, Trenton vying for their first state championship since Freddie, I guess, was it Fred Price? Fred Price in 1961. Team, right, with Tal Brody and George Lee George were on that Lee. team. Yep, on that yeah, team. And Doug, re Doug remembers them. Because, <laughs> I, you know, I was a young, I was 10 years old at the time. Uh, but, but you know, the interesting thing about this team is you don't have the big superstars. They have, you know, some 1,000-point scores, but they play great as a team. You know, we don't have big height, but we have big heart. And they are a class act, and they play hard, and they pick each other up. You don't see uh, if a person makes a mistake, you don't see them get on each other. You see them pick each other up. And, and that's a mark of great coaching and, and a great uh, class of uh, players. 
Well, they certainly do hit the open man. man. Gentlemen, thank you both so much for joining us. It's been a great tournament run. Let's go, Trenton. Let's and, go, Tornadoes. And my personal thanks to the both of you. As a former leader to the new leadership, you two have what makes Trenton great, and it keeps on ticking because you guys are the best. And thank you very much. keep listening to BCB. And uh, once a month, once a month, to, we get right here, revisitors. Trenton High School. Doug, you gotta come join us. Mayor Gusiora does a show the fourth Thursday of every month, 10:30 to 11:30, live right here at Trenton High School. Go we'll tornadoes! Be we'll be back right See after you Thursday. These words. Here, Jerry Blavitt, inviting you to come on by and experience true traditional Italian cuisine at the Revere Restaurant at 802 River Road in Ewing Township. You're always welcome at the restaurant. I mean, it's like stepping back in time. You feel like you're dining in South Philadelphia or in New York's Little Italy restaurant. You can start the meal with complimentary Hoboken bread. You choose from a menu featuring fresh seafood, steaks and chops, or homemade pasta dishes. You can even eat at the bar. The restaurant is open seven days for lunch and dinner. Private rooms are available for special affairs, plus we do catering. Remember, the Revere Restaurant, 609-882-6365. Again, that's 609-882-6365. Come on home and experience the true taste of Italy at the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road, Ewing Township. Our thanks to Bill Redner holding it down at halftime, having the current mayor and the former mayor on to talk some Trenton basketball and fish a great one. This shaping up to be a classic 29-25. Yeah, yeah, South Brunswick showed in the end there that it wasn't gonna be get blown out, uh, hung around, you know, hang around. And uh, let's run down the scoring real quick for the Vikings, Kalani Antoine with 10. Daniel Swire with five and eight rebounds. He's been really unbelievable for them. Uh, Harmahar Chabra, four points. Uh, Bruce Aiden Munoz, two. Uh, Ashir Singh, two. And Joe Rapocio, Rapocio two. Uh, South Brunswick shooting nine for 25 from the field, six for seven from the line. For Trenton, Chris Wilson, 14 points, eight rebounds. Antoine Bridget, seven points. Calvin Moore, four. Devontae Hudson, two. Cabern Goss, two. Tornado shooting 13 for 30, one for one from the line. No, not a lot of turnovers. Only five nope. for South Brunswick and only three for Trenton. Uh, tornadoes out rebounding the Vikings, slight margin, 16 to 14. Well, I think what you're probably going to see is Trenton ramp up the pressure because they did not full court press at all in that first half. And yeah. I would think if you're Daryl Pub Young, you're going to want to start that. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, you know, sometimes you want to come right out and do it. Sometimes you want to sure. pick your spots to do it. Absolutely. And uh, Trenton starts with the ball. Bridget turns it over. Antoine with a steal. Geez, they didn't have one turnover the whole second quarter in <laughs> first position. That's basketball, buddy. It is. Moniz gives it up. Singh almost traveled. Kalani Antoine bounces it down low. Little head and shoulder fake. Jabra missed the shot through contact. Devante on the break. Can't score. Too strong on the layup. It's a missed opportunity for Devontae Hudson right there. Yep. Sing down low. Chabra moves in, falling away, missed the shot. Missed it badly as well. Devontae's done a really nice job. Bridget for three. No good. Long rebound. Antoine to the rim, no foul. And we keep playing on. Calvin Moore with a rebound. Wilson. Can't score, tipped around, Hudson. Great shot by Devontae Hudson on a second effort. 31-25, Chabra is bringing it up on Devontae Hudson. And still Trenton, not really pressing. Oh, Down low, knocked away, stolen away. that badly. Deuce Moore steps in, he scores! Nice start for Trenton. Time out, good call. And there's a whistle, but everybody's looking around. I thought it was a timeout, no? Don't know. All of a sudden, you're down eight. 
Trenton building on that 4-0, a little 4-0 spurt to end the gaff. Another 4-0 spurt, and all of a sudden you're talking about an 8-0 run. Yep, 33-25 now the lead for the Tornadoes. That was a bad possession they had last time. He brought it up. He threw it into double team right, right into underneath the basket. Goss, good defense. Uh, Antoine lost it. And the ball will stay there. 33-25 Singh will inbound it on the baseline. Chevron looking for some space. Wide open is Singh for three. He launches, but it's too strong. Hudson with another rebound. Devante gets it, works it into the paint, floats oh. it up, missed the shot, through contact, tipped out. Wilson. Relentless. Yep. Deuce Moore. Oh, oh. Steps in, and that was not the right call. They say it's a Trenton turnover, but it was knocked out. You tell them, Flash. By the Vikings. Well, they're going to get some wrong. You have to acknowledge that. We had a perfect view of it that time. Says you, not me. <laughs> Antoine steps and fires a three. He missed it. And it's out on Trenton. Well, Antoine had five in the first, or ten in the first half, but really didn't go off at all. I mean, he's averaging close to 20. Right now, he's on his average, 10 and a half, but. Singh. Has to get it in. He barely does. Swirad. Muniz on the dribble drive. Vikings need a bucket badly. Yes, they do. Jabra into the corner. A lot of pump faking going on. Oh, down. yeah. <laughs> Trenton jars it loose for the moment. But Muniz yep, keeps it. Now the crowd's getting into it the longer they hold him. Uh, Antoine missed the shot floating in. <laughs> Trenton causes a turnover. I can't quite understand what Freedom's saying, but he's... He said, this is a championship game, and I can't quite hear you all, so oh. get loud. Wow, good for you. Look at you hearing that. 450, third quarter. Goss off a high screen, picks up his dribble. Calvin Moore, cross court, baseline drive. Wilson scores again. What do you think, timeout for the Vikings? <laughs> yep. 10 point lead for the Tornadoes. Yeah, they need it. Biggest lead of the game for Trenton right now. Henry J. Austin Health Center delivers patient-centered, high-quality health care to everyone in Trenton and in Mercer Counties. Four sites located throughout Trenton. Henry J. Austin Health Center providers are there to help with your medical needs. Looking for affordable prescriptions for you and your family, you can visit the pharmacy department on Warren Street location. Go to henryjaustin.org, henryjaustin.org. Make your New Year's resolution to stay in shape at your neighborhood capital area YMCA, 359 Pennington Avenue in Trenton. Your hometown capital area YMCA offers fitness classes to meet your goals with convenient hours. And for more information on their classes and wellness center, capitalymca.org. That's capitalymca.org. Your hometown capital area YMCA, 359 Pennington Avenue in Trenton. If you miss any of tonight's game, read about it in the Trentonian or trentonian.com. 426 to play third quarter. Trenton, as Fish just mentioned, have built up their biggest lead of the game. And Antoine, deep. floating shot, won't go. Grabs his own board, kicks it out. Munoz hits the big three. Yeah, they Muniz needed that with a badly. massive three. Yeah, they needed that badly. Good hustle by Antoine to follow his own. own Bridget miss. to match. He can't. Leaping up high for the rebound is Hudson, and it's out on him. Hudson didn't like it, but it was it was out on him. It was. 
at least from where I was sitting. <laughs> no, I agree with you. I think he was less touching. Yeah, well, we're kind of sitting in the same place. Greg Grant standing up. I love when Greg Grant stands up. Nobody tells yeah, him where, to sit where at. Where is he? He's, sit, he's standing. He was right behind Pup. Okay, gotcha. He's the one guy that when he stands up, nobody says sit down. I can't see because <laughs> they can still see when he's standing up. Uh, I hope somebody tells him I said that. <laughs> <laughs> I love Greg. 35-28, <laughs> Trenton lead. Central Jersey, group four, sectional title on the line. Work it towards the corner. In the lane. <laughs> Tenacious defense by the Tornadoes. It is tough sledding. Wherever Antoine they go. for three. Can't connect. Swyrat again. Pulled down the rebound. It's knocked out of play by Deuce Moore. I wonder if just if Antoine just isn't feeling comfortable. That was a, that was a fairly open three from what he's had most of the night. But I'm wondering if just the stigma of Trenton's defense has him rushing things a little bit, thinking somebody's going to come over. Offensive foul. That was on Rapoccio. First on Rapoccio. 3.20 to play, third quarter. Here from Trenton. Bridget gets open off a screen, drives in, blocked away. Chabro with a block that time. Vikings moving fast in the lane. Good pass down low. And scoring is Rapoccio. Well, nice job by Rapoccio. Sort of held up, let the defender fly by, and got an easy bucket. Deuce Moore. Off the Wide high screen open. for three, missed. Was short on the triple. They let him have that too. Maybe the scouting report is let him go. Chabra back to the basket. Down low, Chabra. Oh, no. Trying to drive. Capoccio into the corner, shot for three. Off iron. Put up by Antoine that time. Calvin Moore. Goss, tough dribbling. Gives it back up as he fell down. Antoine is 0 for 6 from the field this, this quarter. Tipped and it was last yeah, off that, of Chris Wilson. That kind of hit a few people. It did. That, 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 I tell you, the ref had to do a good job of keeping track of that ball. Darrell Pump Young wants to talk things over. His team built up the biggest lead of the game with 10, and now it's been cut in half. It's 35 to 30. Give a lot of credit to what South Brunswick is doing, especially defensively. Trenton missed a couple of open shots, but it's been tough. Ty Other. Peoples Bakery, proud to support high school sports here on WBCB. Go to 63 Butler Street for the rolls, deli meats, and the pastries. 63 Butler Street, place to go for the best hoagies, finest dessert trays for any get-together. The Italian People's Bakery since 1936. I mean, Cherbra is, he got four points right now. Antoine has a really, really tough 10 points. And, uh, you know, those are the guys that make them go. Between them, they average about 30, 34. Uh, right now, they're at 14. and. Uh, you know, Antoine just can't get it going. He's, let's see, from the field, he is one for six, one for six, seven, eight, two for nine, two for 15 from the field is Antoine. So I'll tell you what, if I'm South Brunswick, I'm feeling pretty good that my scoring threat is shooting two for 15, and I'm right in the game. Right. Because if, if we've learned anything, guys like him will heat up sooner or later. Although with this Trenton defense, I mean, look at that. Muniz couldn't handle the pass, and it wasn't a good one for no, that was a bad, that was not, that was on, not on Muniz. That was a bad pass. Under two to go. Third quarter of play. Trenton a five-point lead. See out of the timeout. 
Uh, Trenton can respond offensively. Trap in the corner. Goss. That's a three. Eight point lead for the Tornadoes. Jabra brings it up. Tipped around into the corner. Vikings keep possession. Jabra. Uh, Turnover again. I'm not sure he thought he, he, was, he, he was expecting that, Rapuccio. I mean, you always have to be alert. You never can assume. But I'll tell you what, he, Jabra really sold it that he was going to the hoop. He made that pass at the very last second. Chance for Trenton again off of a turnover by the Vikings. This is where Trenton does their best work. Bridget moves towards the corner. Goss thought about firing again. He does. Oh, another triple. Cade Goss back to back. Ah, there we go. Jabra bringing it up. Picks up his dribble. Gives in the lane. Yeah, that ball knocked around. Falling away. Nice shot by Swyrad. Down low, a foul called on Devontae Hudson. Devontae Hudson will go to the line. Got hit. I'll tell you what, this is this is Trenton all the way for that. For the long stretches here, Chris Wilson was carrying him offensively. Then all of a sudden, Cap Goss just hits a couple of threes. He becomes the <laughs> the offensive spark plug. It's just one after another. Devontae way too strong. 33 seconds, third quarter. Poccio comes out. Moniz in for the Vikings. Hudson missed them both. Trenton has it. Goss moves in to the corner. Shot for three more. No good. Goss, Goss. another rebound. <laughs> Goss turning into a... <laughs> 20 seconds. Into a rebounding fiend. <laughs> Trenton can hold now. Pressure. Antoine on Antoine again. Seven seconds. Bridget kicks. Moore, two seconds, puts it up, blocked. Quarter three ends with a block. Now that was a good defensive stand by the Vikings and an important one because they had to sort of slow those guys down a little bit. On to the fourth quarter, a close one from Trenton. Trenton 41. South Brunswick, 32, back for the fourth quarter from Trenton after this. New Jersey is home to the best public schools in the nation, and that didn't happen by accident. It's the result of parents, educators, and communities working together year after year to give our students a world-class education, no matter the challenge. Because parents and educators know that with a shared commitment to our public schools, our children can learn, grow, and thrive. And together, we can keep New Jersey's public schools the best in the nation. This is Angela Weiner for your Mercer County Prosecutor, and I'd like to take this opportunity to wish all of our Mercer County student athletes the best of luck, and also urge parents to stay involved in your children's school activities. Extracurricular events are a great way to keep your sons and daughters focused, and it does not have to be athletics. They can be involved with the drama club, the school band, even the debate team. An involved student today has a brighter future tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the Mercer County Prosecutor's Office, and I hope you enjoyed today's Six seed South Brunswick, one seed Trenton Central. Trenton 28 and one, they made it to this game last year. And they are in the fourth quarter of it this year with a lead, 41-32. South Brunswick scoring just six points in that third quarter. Shooting three for nine in the quarter, and 12 for 34 for the game. Trenton's defense, this game really has been about Trenton's defense. And well, with a little Chris Wilson thrown in, and of late, a little Antoine Goss, or Antoine, Kabir Goss. 
driving baseline and a foul on the floor. It's one got fouled. I think South Brunswick is feeling a little frustrated right now offensively, kind of like not quite sure what to do. They're trying to run their offense, but Trenton is making it so hard. I mean, their man to man is just so attack oriented. A travel. See what I mean? Turnover by Chabra. <laughs> yeah, just. He is a little frustrated. They're frustrated. They're kind of confused. And <laughs> this is just. Uh, if, if, if you want to, if you appreciate good defense, you're seeing it right now. The high have done it all year. Deuce Moore directing traffic. He's looking around. Man to man defense. Goss hit two big threes in that third quarter. Floats up a wild shot. And it got denied. Singh with the denial that time. Trenton underneath. Second 16 at the time, 41 32. For the basketball. A lob in, and Hudson takes it. I'll tell you, Trenton hits a couple more buckets here. It's going to be pretty much trouble. Chabra right now is on Calvin Moore. Trenton going to be very deliberate now. Moore not going to take him inside just yet. Now he will. Floats it up. Goss shovels it across. Nice job by Calvin to grab that pass. Swirad steps out on him. Trenton very deliberate. Yeah. And again, it's like I told Don the other day. I, I, I understand why you do this. I just surprised when they do it this early, that's all. I figured they'd attack it for a little couple more time. Well, there you go. You got a good Wilson shot. Wilson fires go and down. missed. Nice job by the Vikings. Held up strong that time. Muniz spins in, stops, gives it up. Swirad down on the block, blocked oh, by Chris Wilson. Oh, and a late foul is called. Oh boy! Oh, <laughs> you know you can you can usually tell when a guy reacts like Chris Wilson reacted that that probably wasn't a good call because that is pure disbelief on his face, and you don't get that kind of disbelief when you're just trying to sell it. Well, especially <laughs> the way that these officials have called the game, they've let a lot go. And if I thought have called a really solid game so far. Yeah, they've been a non-factor. I mean, that which is what you want to say about a referee. Yes. <laughs> Swirad hits the first. But in every game, you're going to have a handful of questionable calls, if you will. That just happens to be one of them. Yeah. Forty-one to thirty-four, Trenton lead. And Fish, we talked about this a lot as well. That Trenton has been able to find ways to win these low-scoring games, yep. and then they've ran it up. They scored a hundred yep. once. They've scored one hundred and eighteen once. Uh, so they can win both games. They've proven it. They've won a thirty-four to thirty game earlier this season. More over to Wilson. He's been Ooh. quiet of late. Almost traveled. Hudson on the drive. Floating shot, oh. no good. Bridget, Bridget picks right up the there. rebound. Goss gets it down low. Wilson knocked away and a jump ball. Yeah, nice job by Chabra there to come over and tie Wilson up. No, I'm not sure what's going on here. And the floor will have to be wiped down. Ah, the old floor. <laughs> the old wet floor trick. Look at Craig Grant. He's out of his seat now. He's standing right behind the bench. He's he he's his his intensity for this game is as much as the players. <laughs> he's never lost it. All through what he did at Trenton State in the NBA, he still bleeds that tornado black and red profusely. More 
trying to set the table again. Gabe Goss. Trenton just running their stuff right now. Yeah. South Brunswick are kind of letting them do it. The key Five for, minutes. The key for South Brunswick now is to not be lulled to sleep. You know, don't just keep thinking Trenton's going to pass it because they'll, they'll back door or do something. Devontae passed up a wide open look. I don't know, Flash. Seven points. Would you be this deliberate? I would not. Seven points? Unless I was confident that I was not going to turn it over. Well, they seem. They are running a lot of time. Well, you certainly hope for this and then scoring. Last time well, they yeah. did this, they didn't score. Well, so if you that's don't the score risk. and then they come down and score again, now all of a sudden it's a five-point game. What an interesting strategy. Yeah. But almost half the quarter has gone by. Lob pass to Wilson in the corner. He wasn't expecting it. Kind of flinched when he saw that ball coming at him. Joe Holman is just telling his team, just keep relaxing, don't. Uh, foul in the front court on Singh. Trenton, four minutes <laughs> away from a title. Trenton's got to get it in and. Goss grabs it. Four minutes and we haven't had a basket in this quarter yet. <laughs> We've only had two points, two foul shots. Trenton still controlling. Hudson got fouled as he went up. Well, there you go. Got to make these though. Devontae missed the last two. Big free throws. Hudson last time missed them both. No trouble this time, at least for the first one. When you write his name, put down thousand point score. Tell him I told you. Big free throws for Devontae Hudson. Well, as easy as he made those, you wonder how he even missed them before. <laughs> well, so now that was good strategy. They sliced over. Almost close to two minutes off the clock and came away with two extra points. So now it's up to nine. And South Bruns is not going to be, allowed, be able to allow them to do that after this. They're going to have to yeah. start to tack it, doubling up on the ball. Or They're going to have to put the, the full court press on. Yeah. First thing they have to do is score. Henry J. Austin Health Center delivers patient centered, high quality health care. For everyone in Trenton and in Mercer County's four sites located throughout Trenton, Henry J. Austin Health Center providers are there to help with your medical needs. Looking for affordable prescriptions? Go to Henry J. Austin Pharmacy, located on the Warren Street location, henryjaustin.org. That's henryjaustin.org, the center of wellness. Trenton 346 away. As I mentioned, they were in this game last year. They lost a tough one on the road to Marlboro. And now we're back in this game, hungrier than ever. Great to have home court advantage. And it is. It's just, it's just great. First off, you don't have to take a bus ride to Marlboro. Right. <laughs> you know, and uh, now familiar. Trenton has the pressure on. Yeah. Darryl Pup Young has done the opposite of what I thought he was going to do. Yeah. <laughs> that's why he's the coach. Oh. And in and out. Ooh, Did everything but drop. That's Antoine with a miss. sums up the dike for Antoine. Even when they're supposed to go down, they don't. Goss just feels like Trenton's one more big bucket away from feeling a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. Well, right now, it's a three-possession game. Yep. Hudson steps in, falling away. Oh, oh, just missed. That would have blew the roof off this place. It would have. Chabra. Still, still waiting for our first basket of the quarter. Chabra spinning. <laughs> there it is. Got the shot to fall down. With under Good three shot. minutes left. 252. There's the trap. 
Vikings swarming the ball. Wilson, who's played a great game, spins, tries to get inside. Denied there by Singh. Calvin Moore sees the bucket and puts it in. Timeout, Daryl Pup Young. <laughs> there it is. There's that timeout after the Trenton basket that we've been waiting for. Yep. They have to score, otherwise. Not taking the timeout. 2.34 to go now. And it's 45 to 36. And some fans are not happy with that timeout <laughs> as they started to get up and get loud. <laughs> Don't forget if you miss any of tonight's game, read about it in the Trentonian or Trentonian.com. I mean, it's, it's kind of true, right? You want to try to keep some of the momentum, but obviously Pup wanted to talk about some more things. Pup marches through his own drummer. He does. <laughs> Whatever it but, is, it's been working. But I looked around and a couple of people kind of had their hands up and go, why? <laughs> well, if they've been watching us all year, they, <laughs> they wouldn't be surprised at all. <laughs> they would know that we always say, why? Well, well I think in the, in the Mercer County tournament might have been the best one where I think he took a timeout after they had scored yeah. And they were up by about 28 at that time. Yeah. And he was ran onto the floor to yeah. take the timeout. It was yeah. one of the funnier things you've ever seen. And we both cracked up. Long <laughs> pass. Antoine got oh. blocked and a foul. <laughs> foul on the shot. 2.32 to play. And remember, everybody, just a programming note if you're watching this game, and you want to check in on Nottingham tomorrow, we will have an all-audio broadcast. Nottingham versus Morristown at Brick Memorial. Get on the air about 6.45, Fish and I. You won't be able to see that, but I know that Flash will paint the picture. I will do the best I as can. As if you're looking at it with your <laughs> very eyes. I will merely confuse the issue and muddle it. <laughs> You'll do fine. <laughs> will I? What's going on now? Seems to be a little confusion. Chabber's got his hands up like what's going on. 45 to 36 and more pausing of the action here. So it was Rapaccio, who will shoot. Yeah. Off the mark. Well, these are big free throws, and he needs to knock this one down. It's just been a nightmare offensive second half for South Brunswick. Second one goes. And Flash, for the third straight game now, we have seen the tornadoes short circuit the other team's bleeding score their big gun we've seen them shut them not yep. completely shut them down but make them a non-factor in this game fight for the ball and daryl pub young smartly takes a timeout to save it they, they did it against west windsor they did it against middletown south they're doing it again tonight they just they just managed to take Take the, take the key to the game out of the game. And, I mean, look at this. Look at this. There's 2.14 to go. They, they, they don't have a basket in, in this quarter. Neither does Trenton, but Trenton came right. into the quarter with a, with a not, you know, with a, uh, what was it? 11-point uh, lead, I think. Right. Uh, yeah. 40. Yeah, 42 to 30. Uh, wait, that's, that's just, that was 41 to 32. They came in with a nine-point lead. So if if neither team scores baskets, that's an advantage for Trenton. Absolutely. And you know the strategy clearly was they were going to slow some things down. And they did it twice and took a lot of valuable minutes off the clock. Right. And then Devontae hit a couple of free throws. Athletic director Sharon Grady and yucking it up with freedom over there. <laughs> I think Sharon, 
And Sharon's always a nervous Nelly about the outcome of these games, but I I'm think sure. she's feeling, I think she's feeling a little confident. Two fourteen to play. It's all that stands between Trenton and the sectional title. Eight point game. Do they start fouling? I think you've got to be close. Oh, Hudson had it slip through his Look hands, out. fires it. And Trenton luckily will get it back. I thought Dante was going to crash into the table here. I was worried about him. Did a good job of keeping his balance. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> and Chabra just fell down. There was a little hand fighting in there, but. Devante saying that he fell down, and Chabra is just clapping it up. Yeah, well, this, this never yeah, usually yeah, works yeah. out too well. No. The next play. <laughs> no. <laughs> Lob pass, good job by Trenton. There's the pressure, and a foul. I mean, they're going to have to foul a few times here. Yep. <laughs> that was only their fifth team yeah. foul. Rapaccio comes in for the Vikings. Minute 57. This game has taken on a new pace here in this fourth quarter. <laughs> yeah, no pace at all. <laughs> <laughs> Muniz trying to save it, and he does. Oh. A foul on the floor on Trenton. Big time takeaway. The Vikings absolutely need a bucket here. Yeah. Big time only if it only if they make a count. That's only the sixth turnover this game for Trenton. Huge oh. possession. Ball's loose. Taken by Trenton. Deuce Moore ends up with it. Fans now on their feet. Well. <laughs> Nine points in the second half for South Brunswick so far. Again, the, Vic the, the Tornadoes haven't done a, a heck of a lot better, but they've got 14 in the second half, but they were the ones building the lead. Trenton will have it underneath. That was the sixth team foul, so one more. And then the bonus. I'm sorry, 10 points this half for the Vikings. And Rapaccio will come out. Swirad will come in. It was great on the boards tonight. Yes, he has been. trenton has got to get it in, and they do for the moment, and a foul. And Antoine ends up on the ground. This should be a one and one. But Bridget get up. A little shaken up, but looks okay. And a thousand point score of the general. Trying to put in this one and one. He got it. Both good. That's huge. Ten point lead for Trenton. Less than 90 seconds to play. Antoine has his, he's got nine tonight. Chabra missed the falling away shot. Antoine off glass, no good, no whistle. And Trenton gets the rebound. Goss dribbling through traffic. And a foul, and Kate Goss goes to the line. Well, I don't want to jinx anything, but I think it looks pretty good for Trenton right now. I mean, the way South Brunswick performed offensively this half, it'd be, a, it'd be an unbelievable miracle to see them get it together and make up 10 points in a minute eight, make up up now. 
11 points in a minute eight. Crazier things can happen, but right now the Tornadoes doing everything right down the stretch. Goss nails them both. A minute and eight away. Goss with 10 now. Vikings have to move fast. Real One fair. minute to go from Trenton. Too long, too long. Antoine in and out on the three. Trenton has the rebound again. That guy, Kansas, couldn't buy a basket tonight. Great player, but again, we see Trenton make a great player out of the game. I feel bad for Antoine. You can just see it on his face. He just feels like he just let his team down, and he, I'm sure he didn't. I mean, I'm sure you know, Coach Joe Homan now has his arm around him telling them, look kid, we wouldn't have been here without you. Don't, don't you feel bad. Just had a one bad, one. Shoot, bad shooting game at the wrong time. And again, he's, not, he's got good company. <laughs> everybody, everybody that comes in here that can score points seems to not do it against the Tornadoes. Antoine now in double figures with 10. Trenton in firm control. Antoine with 11, Dante with six, Goss with 10, Wilson with 16, Moore with six. Again, all the points coming from the starters. Chabra gives it up, launching a three as Singh. It's off the mark. Hudson grabs the rebound. 25 seconds to play. And South Brunswick still get a foul. That's a little. I don't see what you're getting out of that. 14 points with 23 seconds to go. <laughs> so Thursday night at Central High School, Trenton High will meet either Egg Harbor or Lenape. Celebration. How about that game tomorrow night, Flash? That's yeah. a repeat of the Central Jersey final, the year that uh, Nottingham won it. And what a game that was. Mm. Darrell Johnson scored. They, they, they inbounded with two seconds to go and got a bucket to force overtime wow. and won the game. Celebration beginning now for Trenton as the reserves come in. Trenton. Moments away from winning the sectional title under Daryl Pup Young. They got to this game last year, fell short. They all talked about it for a long time. We were not going to be the ones that fell short this time. Flash, if I walked in here tonight and told you Trenton is not going to score a basket in the fourth quarter <laughs> and they're going to win by double figures, would you think <laughs> me to be insane? <laughs> I think it would have taken you off the broadcast. Yeah, well, that's exactly what's happening right now. Trenton owns a 16-point lead. They have not scored a basket in this second or in this first fourth quarter. They have, however, gone 10 for 10 from the foul line. How about that? Unbelievable. And South Brunswick with just five points. Five points in the fourth quarter. Oh, silly foul. Yeah, no reason to foul at all. No yeah. reason to even play defense, really. No, right, actually. Well, that, that's ingrained in their DNA. They have to play defense. It's a party here at Trenton. Ten seconds away. Five seconds. Shot's no good. Batted around. Another shot at the buzzer. Expectations meet reality as Trenton wins their 29th game and they are Central Jersey Group 4 sectional champions. Class, what can you say? All about defense. We've said it all night. All about defense. The starters playing tremendous for Trenton. 
They shut down Colony Antoine, who's averaging 19, 19 and a half a game. He had 10 all in the first half. Hamahar Shabra, who runs the show, he had six points. Uh, they, they just, they deed it up. They're deserving champions. They're not flukes. They're not, this isn't an upset. This is what should have happened if Trent and I played the game that they know how to play, and they did. I'm going to head out now, buddy, so I will see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, Fish. Rich Fisher will take off as one seed, Trenton Central. They expected to be here. They worked hard to be here after losing last year. And they have put together one of the greatest seasons of all time as a tornado team. They continue to add to the amount of games that they have won. They broke the record last round. Now they have got their 29th win. They're 29 and one, and they are sectional champions after Nottingham beat Ewing on the road last night to win a sectional title. Chris Rabba's team doing something miraculous. And now the celebration is on. Trophy being presented by Sharon Grady. From the head coach, Daryl Pup Young, hey, tears hey, of joy hey, listen, this listen. year, and I'm from the 80s. we had talked you know, we about traveled, it. We took bus loads. Guys, we're going to South Jersey Thursday from the semifinal to go to Rutgers. I'll give you my city in the building. Wilson going to stop by our player of the game. You get the tickets off the same side you did this time. Seven o'clock. Good game. Chris, congratulations. You guys are the champions this year after such a disappointing finish last season. So walk me through the process and everything that it took to get here to finally you could celebrate tonight. It took a lot of hard work throughout the season. Remember, we came in the same place last year. We lost. We wanted it so bad. We came back. Well, Coach Young talked about how you guys left crying everybody last year, and now this year, tears of joy. How much work did you put in to make sure that this result were to happen this year 
rather than work. something that happened last year. A lot of work. We all went hard. We all go hard every day in practice. We keep going. We keep doing this. Next day, practice. We got two more to go, though. Yeah, you guys will continue to uh, to play and um, walk me through this game because it seemed like you were firing out of the gate. You obviously you had a tough matchup with you know a guy that's six six down there and a, and a really good guard that could shoot. Had mm -hmm. a bit of an off shooting night, but for you, you got going early and often. What was the key there? Uh, just play my game. Stay calm. Play tough. Play hard. You looked like you were very comfortable from behind the arc. Is that something you notice early before you start shooting, or is it something that you pick it up when the game starts? Yeah, pregame I was hitting. I knew, I knew it was going to be a good night. Well, listen, you're the Thai People's Bakery player of the game. Congratulations. Thank you. And you guys are Central Jersey Group 4. Thank you. Sectional final champions. Best of luck the rest of the way, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. You got it. Oh, we got Coach. Coach Daryl Pup Young, congratulations to you, sir. Thank you, thank you, you appreciate just, it. You just mentioned about how tough of a finish it was last year. What did it take to get back here and win it? They, they, they just were so focused. You know, we, we've been locking them in from day one. We've been locking them in from the time we walked out of Marlboro Gym last year. We've just been so focused, man. The kids have been so disciplined. And more importantly, man, it's nothing like when you have players that are coachable. These kids are willing to do everything we ask of them. And if you if you came to our practice and, and just if you just came to our training from the first day of training, our off season, they work so hard, man. And yeah. and I play five guys tonight. How many teams can pretty much without Dom, pretty much Damir came off the bench for a while, gave us some good minutes. But pretty much I played five guys tonight. They're conditioned to go 32 minutes. So when you put your second and third guy in there, my first five is still out there playing like they just started the game. And and, and, and I told them uh, when, when Antoine and, and Deuce and those guys and Devontae were um, freshmen, they used to look at the condition as punishment. And I would always tell them, like, just, just relax, just wait, just wait. You're going to see why we condition the way we do. You can't, you can't be out of shape playing our style. You no, know? no, no way. No way. And I was a little surprised, especially when you came out in the second half, that you didn't put the full court pressure on. What went into this game plan? Because it turned out to be brilliant. It was a lower scoring game, yeah. and you guys, you know, you didn't have to yeah. really press the full 90. No. I keep telling people we, we, can, we can win in any style. We can win in any style. These guys are very coachable. They have high basketball IQs. They can play at any style. But the thing was, we wanted to keep South Brunswick in, South Brunswick in front of us. You know, uh, if you look at number 11, if you watch film on them, we know we, we tried to we, we trapped the pick and roll a lot. I knew we would have got burnt on that tonight because Levin is a great shooter, and I knew they was going to hit him with the short pick and roll all night long. So we wanted to keep this team in front of us. We wanted to keep, we didn't want to get early fouls early. Well, Tuan got the two early, but we wanted to keep them in front of us and just press them, you know, not our, not our regular pressure, but just keep everything in front of us and stay in between your man and the ball. That's all we wanted to do, just keep them in front of us, stay in between your man and the ball. And because if you watch, when I watched film on they did a lot of backdooring, a lot of cuts, uh, cuts across the um, across the middle of the um, court. And one of the, one, of the, one of the things they did great, man, that I know every coach that Watson respects, the big number 14, he is one of the best passers I've ever seen in my life. We didn't, get it, we didn't give him a chance to display it tonight, but this kid can pass, man. And that's what we respect more than anything tonight. So that's why we just wanted to keep them in front of us and stay connected to our man. How did you manage expectations this year? Because last year you did a great job as that underdog, right? That yes. seven seed that underdog where you had to travel, you guys you know, played great down the stretch there, just came up short. But this year, you knew that everybody was going to be looking at, at the high. Oh, yeah. All oh, year long. Oh, yeah. How have you managed the expectations and how have you kept these guys so ready to go and to the point where this team has won any – or they, they've won more games than any other Trenton high team. Yeah. How did you do it? The, the thing was, was to keep them humble. We knew we, were going to be, we, knew, we knew we were going to be good coming back this year, but the main thing, we, we didn't want them, we didn't want them thinking they were, they were that team, they just were going to run, run right through it because they got there last year. That was the main thing, because you can see it a little bit. They, coming out of that game last year on the bus, they was like, we're going back, Coach, we're going back. But my main thing was letting them know, you, you're not the seventh seed this year. You're, going to be, you're not going to be a seventh seed. I, we predicted that we would be ranked in the state around December, which happened. You know, because we had a great summer up at Hamilton Park, 22-1. and 1. 
We lost the semifinals. Uh, our only one loss came in the semifinals to St. Pat's. So we knew coming into that year that we had a nice buzz in New Jersey, and eventually, if we took care of business in December, we would be ranked in the state. And me and my staff just wanted to keep them, let them know, you're going to have a bullseye on your back. And everybody's gunning for you. So our preparation and practice and in the, the offseason was all about just keeping them humble, man. Keeping them humble and letting them, letting them know, no matter what the papers are writing about you, the game is won in between the lines. You have to win it on the court. Do not read the clippings. Uh, I mean, you want to give the kids their flowers, which I do, but I had to keep them humble, man. You got to keep young guys humble because they start thinking we this, we that. And the main thing this season was coming into the season was just keeping them humble. Let them know they got a target on their back and they're going to have to work for everything they get. They're going to have to earn it. You're not just, people are not just going to roll over for you. You made a name for yourself, so every time you take an L, you make somebody's season. And you also accomplished something else that I know that you wanted was that Mercer County tournament that had, oh. that had eluded you for a while. Oh, you would man. run into great teams. Oh, and finally this year, <laughs> what was that moment like? That, that Trenton Catholic, man. <laughs> 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 even, even when I would get the number one seed, yeah, right. I still had to face Trenton Catholic. Couldn't get past him, you know what I'm saying? But um, that, that, that's a credit to Falcon and his staff, man. They had great players. They always had the D1 guys. But our guys went at them every year. Every year, just couldn't get over the hump. So to finally go in there to the Iron Powers and beat them in the regular season this year and then to go and get the counties, man, oh, man, I'm so proud of my guys. I'm just so proud of them, man. Last so question, because Fish and I always talk about this, and we can't figure out the Daryl Pup Young timeout situation <laughs> always after you score most of the time. <laughs> and we laughed during one of the games in the Mercer County Tournament. I think you guys, you made a three to go up like 25 points. Yes and you ran out to half court to take a timeout. We just want to know what the strategy, obviously it works for you guys, yeah. but what is that for you? Vlad, you and Fizz, y'all love doing that, man. I watch y'all, y'all crack me, I'll be dying. <laughs> and every time I think about it, I forget to say something to Fizz in the pregame. But it's, it's a lot of times it's a gut feeling, or maybe we've been, or maybe say we were up, up 20, yeah, and we make a run, we hit a three. But before that, we might have missed four or five shots. Or I just want to get us in a certain defense. Or I just want to get us to settle down. You know, not let it, not let it, not, I don't want the team to get back in the game. So a lot of times it'd be, it'd be based on that, a gut feeling or just we're not playing at our best. Even though we made that run right there, we, we get it back, make a run. And I see, I was seeing something before that and I wanted to get a chance to talk about it. And a lot of times I like to take it when we make that shot, I like to take that time out. If you ever notice, I'm not the guy to call time out when the team is coming back or, or, or making a run on us. I don't, because I think that gives the team energy and I never want to do that. I mean, it's times where you just have to, but if you watch yes. me, most of the game, I got all my timeouts in the fourth quarter. <laughs> well, that, that's... I wish Fitz was here tonight. So oh, my God. <laughs> we had been wondering that for so long, and he kept forgetting to ask. But listen, I thought last year you did one of the best coaching jobs that I've ever seen. I appreciate you. And I think this year you might have just surpassed what you did last year. I appreciate you. And your sectional that. champions, your Mercer County Tournament champions, thanks for a couple of minutes. I really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. you Thank got you guys it. for being here all the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Trenton Central and Coach Daryl Pup Young joining us on the postgame show. Chris Wilson as well. And what a job by Trenton Central this year. They've won 29 games and just phenomenal. And they are group four Central Jersey sectional champions. Covered all right here on the WBCB Sports Network. 53 to 37 Trenton Central. With the win, and thanks to the sponsors making this live stream possible, Capital Health System, Holdem and Ford Subaru, the Revere Restaurant, New Jersey Education Association, Mercer County Prosecutor's Office, Team Toyota, Capital Area YMCA, the Trentonian, Hyundai of Trenton, the Italian People's Bakery, Henry J. Austin Health Center, as well as Saw Funeral Homes and Mako in Ewing. Thanks to our crew, Brianne O'Neill, Nolan Buser, who's here, Alvin Francis, uh, Mario Coniglio, as well as Jess Nazario and Ulysses Villanueva. Thanks to all them here at Trenton Central. Thanks to Bill Redner for being here. He did the halftime and helped us corral some guests. And uh, thanks to everybody else here at Trenton High as well. Trenton Central are the champions of Central Jersey Group 4, 53-37, avenging their loss from last year. For my broadcast partner, Rich Fisher, this is Keith Noonan saying so long until tomorrow night. We have Nottingham versus Morristown. Audio-only broadcast at Brick Memorial High, 645 starting time right here on the WBCB Sports Network.